Let's kick off with our first guest. Please put it together. Give a big PPMA Show 2024 round of applause for the general sales manager from Ishida Europe, Paul Hitchin, ladies and gentlemen. Come on up, Paul. Come on up. Grab a seat. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Paul, um, 130th anniversary. Was that last year or the year yes, before? Yes, that was last year. I also noticed that you are on the picture there as well. <laughs> I am. I are mean, you wearing the same jacket? Uh, it might might possibly, almost be the same jacket. I hey. have two suits. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just like me, as we'll find out if you're here across all three days this week. Uh, so first of all, we're going to head over to your stand where your colleague Glenn is there with a camera in a few moments' time. But first okay. of all, just tell us a little bit about Ishida, because as we can see from the picture behind us, it's been around for a little while. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Ishida has been um, in, in the forefront for, for many, many years. It started in um, Japan as a weighing company, or only weighing company in, uh, around the 1800s, um, and then moved through into more sort of automation and engineering, and Ishida Europe actually um, started around about 1987. Okay. So it's been, uh, we've got a lot of years in the, uh, in the automation industry. And you've been a regular uh, visitor, regular member here at Absolutely. the PPMA show for a good time as well. Well, I've got a, a little stat on that. So, oh, go for it. Um, so 40 years, P Ashida have been doing PPMA. Wow. And I, I, you can count on one hand the number that we've missed. So we've pretty much done virtually every single PPMA exhibition. So we've got a good history with PPMA starting in around about 87. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of, lot of history with PPMA. We've actually done 12, we, we counted up earlier on, we've done 12 product launches um, at PPMA of new innovations. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty stunning. Now, you've not been here for quite all 40 of those, have you? No, no. <laughs> I, I've, I've been here for nearly 30 though. Okay, wow. <laughs> so, well, you, you wear yeah. it very well. Thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, tell me, what is it that you are most keen to showcase to visitors this year? And I'm using that as a segue into what we're going to be talking about in a moment with the IXPD. But what is it you're most keen to showcase to visitors yeah, okay. to this year's show? So Ashida is predominantly a multi layer company um, specialising in automation. Um, we've uh, probably in the last 10 years launched um, a lot of X-ray and inspection systems. Uh -huh. And the IXPD really is a, is a step up from sort of a standard um, X-ray system. Um, and that's really what, uh, what we're here to um, talk about today. All right, then. So as I say, this is how this is going to work. We're going to do a live cut to our camera, our live camera over at your stand where okay. Glenn is going to be. Take it away. Tell us what it is we're looking at. Uh, thanks, David. I will indeed do. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm pleased to introduce the IXPD X-ray inspection system from Ishida. Now, the IXPD represents the pinnacle of the latest technology that is available within X-ray inspection today. What actually differentiates the machine is the way that the image is generated on the screen. And without wanting to go too technical, but with traditional X-rays, the way the image is generated is from an X-ray generator on the top, the X-ray beam passes through the product, onto a detector underneath. And with traditional technology, actually the detector itself didn't measure X-ray as such. There was a material called a scintillator, and what the scintillator did, and does with many systems still, is convert that X-ray into visible light, and the detector measures the visible light. The IXPD is what we call a photon counting or a photon detection X-ray based system. And that removes the scintillation process from the image generation. What that gives us is a much clearer, much more defined image. And what it enables us to do with that technology is we have a much finer resolution and the fact that the detector is able to measure the energy of the X-ray photons that are received, we are enabled to, uh, to use what we call a dual energy process as well. So this technology not only enhances the detection of items that were easy to detect with X-ray before, such as stainless steels and metals, it really enhances the sensitivity that we can achieve on those items 
but has the double benefit of really being able to focus in and hone in on items that would be previously un 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 undetectable with X-ray. Yeah. Now, you can see on the image here, what we've actually used is just, whoops, is simply a packet of pasta. Now, the reason that we've used pasta is you can see from the image, we have many different densities, many different shapes, overlapping products. And so from an X-ray perspective, it's quite a challenging product to do to achieve any really sort of good results. Traditionally, with something like this, you do very well on metal detection, but the detection of other less dense foreign bodies would be challenging. In this case, what we can see here, and these are the test pieces that we've used for this example. Uh, so you can see here we've detected one. Keep that microphone, keep that microphone nice and close, yes. there, Glenn. There we go. I need three hands for this. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> so here we can see we've detected all six of our stainless steel foreign bodies. That gets us down to 0.3 millimeters stainless steel, right. which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, most systems on a product like this, you're going to be looking in, in the region of maybe 1 to 1.5 millimeters. Right. So going down to 0 0.3 is phenomenal. The wire is even more impressive. So this is stainless steel wire, 5 millimeter lengths down to an 0.2 millimeter diameter. And those are enhanced by the improvements in the resolution of the detector. The next two samples um, are enhanced by the dual energy aspects of the photon counting system. So here we can see glass and we can clearly see the first two pieces by eye. So those would be picked up by a traditional X-ray. So that's five and four millimeters. But actually, we've got another one, two, three here that have been detected by the system that are not visible to the human eye. And that's getting us down to 1.5 millimeters glass. Obviously, glass is a high-risk foreign body, something that the customer doesn't want to find within their product. But also, glass is a good indicator for things like mineral stones. And the final one we have here is an EDPM rubber, you know, the type of rubber that's commonly used within sealing and O-ring materials and, th and, and things like that. So again, it's often a material that people have a foreign body risk with and want to be able to find within their process. And, and here, none of these are really visible to the human eye, mm. but yet the machine is still able to clearly differentiate those and detect those reliably. So here we're getting one, two, three, four, five, and six and that's getting down to a three millimeter rubber piece, uh, which again is absolutely phenomenal in terms of the detection that we can achieve today from what yeah. we've been able to do previously. Um, and that is a quick introduction to the IXPD. Good stuff, good demo there. Thank you very much indeed, Glenn. I should introduce you to the audience, by the way. That's Glenn Oxborough, who is a quality control specialist at Ashida. And the good news is that Glenn is gonna be putting down that microphone and running over here to answer your question. So hopefully right now as I'm chatting, Glenn is putting down the microphone and hot footing it here to join Paul on the sofa. Um, Paul, just while Glenn makes his way here and do arm yourself with questions. If you have any questions about the demo that you've just seen, great demo by the way, just before lunchtime, feeling a bit peckish already with the pasta. Um, what kind of production lines would you typically, would you expect to see the IXPD installed upon given its, given its benefits as we just saw there, you know, in terms of the, the resolution of the foreign body detection? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, what, what um, with, with the sample products or the sample um, contaminant that Glenn had there, there was the, uh, the rubber sample. And one of the things that we've um, found um, actually using the X, uh, IXPD is that French fries actually, where they're harvested from, they're harvested from a field. Yeah. And very often there's golf courses nearby <laughs> these fields. And the, uh, the golf balls actually get chopped up as right. part of the, the process. And um, very often you find rubber in a bag of French fries. Right. And French fries are particularly difficult because they can overlap. Yes. And the IXPD is great at identifying these small pieces of rubber, which have actually come from um, golf balls in 
uh, French, frozen French fries, for example. So that is a good application. A bag of frozen French fries is, is ideal for IXPD. But in, in reality, food, food safety at the moment is a huge topic. And, and I think finding small levels of contaminant like the IXPD can do is just phenomenal. It never fails to blow me away um, what, you know, what the machine can find. It's just phenomenal. Golf balls in bags of potatoes. I've never heard that one before, but it's, a, it's certainly a good story. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to throw a joke out there. Uh, how many golf balls would you expect to find in a bag of, uh, of chips? <laughs> Actual golf balls, probably not many. Normally, they're small pieces. Uh, but, uh, I was going to say four, if... <laughs> but then that's, that's just a joke for the golf people around here. Um, thank you very much for laughing okay. so generously yeah, there. No. Uh, how new is IXPD? I mean, what, what we're looking at here is new for the show, I take it. Yes. You mentioned before your heritage of launching new products using PPMA Show as a platform. Is the IXPD product that we just saw sparking new? The, um, not the official launch here, but certainly with the first time it's been to PPMA and it is a very new machine, probably within the last 12 months. Fantastic. Like, uh, Welcome everyone, star of stage and screen. It's Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very well much done, indeed, Glenn. Glenn. Well done. Um, that was a really good demo. Thank you very much indeed for uh, showing us that, that packet of pasta with the different sizes of contaminant in there. And I think everyone will agree that came across very clearly on the screen and in the demo there. Um, we were just chatting while you were working away over here about the types of applications for that product in different yeah. types of production line. And Paul was talking us through the uh, golf ball and, uh, oh, and potato yes, story, yes, which, is, which yes. is great fun. Where yeah. else might you expect customers to start implementing this kind of product? Um, I think as Paul touched on, you know, there's complex and overlapping products, um, which has traditionally been very difficult for X-Ray is, is, is key. Um, so as well as things like the French fries, um, things like bags of frozen vegetables, those types of products. Yeah. But really, one of the main advantages that we have with the system is the detection of bones and proteins. Um, and it really okay. in, improves the capabilities in that arena as well. So things like um, the reliability of detecting um, bone in chicken. Yep. As a company, we've been able to do that quite successfully with our current G2 technology, which is the previous dual energy technology to what we're showing today. Um, but the PD takes that on a step further again um, and you know, really improves the probability of detection in some of the more challenging bones. Things like wishbones yes. have, have always been, certainly with the G2, detectable on a reliable basis. But when you get down to things like rib bones and fan bones in chicken, those are much more challenging to do. And the PD really shows a distinct advantage in those areas. And in terms of articulating the, 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 the scale, if you like, of the advantages that the new system brings, are there any metrics in there that, that you can talk about? You know, you say it's better, it can detect smaller. Are there any numbers behind that that can help people understand the extent to which it provides additional value? I think it's... It's quite difficult to do because it's very much on an application by application basis. Sure. But if you take the example that we had on the stand with the, um, with the bag of pasta, yep. um, with a traditional X-ray system, um, things like the rubber would not be detectable at all. Yep. Um, so that's opening up an, an arena for, you know, for the customer to be able to detect a different type of foreign body than they, were, than they would be able, be able to do before. Mm -hmm. Something like the glass would be maybe four or five millimeters. Yep. where in the case of the PD, we're down to 1.5. You have to forgive me, but my, my, my maths of calculating the volume of a sphere <laughs> is not something I can do off the top of my head. But, Can't you, you? but, but you know, you're talking <laughs> Next time. multiple, multiple, multiple times. Yep. Um, and especially when you get down to things like the small metals, you know, mm. we're down to 0 0.3 millimeters there. With a traditional X-ray system, for us anyway, we would yeah. probably be around the 0 0.7, 0 0.8 millimeters, something like that. So again, you know, in terms yeah. of the volume of metal that's there, it's yeah, multiple times better, multiple times more accurate. I've got more questions here, but I want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to ask some questions too. So does anyone have any questions from around the floor? Otherwise, I'll, I'll come back to a couple that I've got going on here. No, we're doing a good job of answering the questions so far in that case, but just do pop your hand up, Abby. Put your hand up, Abby. Abby will have a microphone and be able to run around and uh, make sure that your question can be heard as well. Um, maintenance costs. I mean, I, I've got a couple of questions, I guess, around what if you are looking, but maybe you're a greenfield site, maybe you haven't used a, mm -hmm. an X-ray based system before, but in terms of ongoing maintenance costs and impact, yep. what does that look like? 
as with any x-ray system, there is an ongoing maintenance that's required. So with a traditional x-ray system, um, the x-ray generator itself is a wear part. You know, you need to think like the x-ray generator effectively like a light bulb. Yep. And a light bulb has a finite life in the same way that the x-ray generator has a finite life. Um, so that is an, is an ongoing maintenance cost. With the PD, we've actually been able to utilize a proven generator that we've used in one of our other technologies, which has um, and, you know, a, a really impressive lifetime. So it's much better than existing dual energy technologies in that perspective, because dual energy tends to use higher power. Um, and that you know, shortens the lifetime of the generator. So with the PD, we're able to get the, the same benefits of dual energy, improve the detection, but actually extend the lifetime of that component. Okay. The key component to the PD though is the, is the line sensor. And that's the item that actually reads the amount of X-ray coming through, counts the photons, measures their energies. As we said on the stand, that actually doesn't use a scintillation process that's used by existing X-ray systems. And it's actually that scintillator that is the wear part for the line sensor. Um, so it's that part that breaks down over time. And that's why the line sensor in most X-ray systems requires replacement on, you know, wh whatever time scale that might be. So actually with the PD, your ongoing costs are much smaller than they would be with a traditional system. Final question from me, and again, uh, sharpen your pencils if you have any questions out there in the audience. Um, let's say you are a production line who doesn't use any X-ray uh, detection equipment at the moment, and you might be considering doing this for the first time. What are the things that you need to consider in terms of, for example, health and safety? You know, what, what are the things that if you are putting one of these systems in and you've not had to worry about this stuff before that you would need to consider? Um, Actually, having X-ray on site for the first time isn't too onerous. Um, there, there are a few hurdles that you have to jump through naturally, mm -hmm. um, but those are things that we, are, we as Ishida, as, as, as a business, can guide the customer through. Um, but in short, you have to do a health and safety. You have to let the health and safety executive know that you're in, intending to use X-ray. You have to have effectively a risk assessment in, in place and some and some trained personnel, yeah. um, and that really is is the sum of it. In terms of safety, around the machines, we have to under the ionising and radiation regulations have to ensure that the legislation states the emissions are as low as is reasonably practicable, which is a bit woolly. Yeah, but effectively, we see that as being no for any of the machines that leave our facility we try and be below 0 0.5 micro sieverts per hour okay so that means that if you're anywhere around that machine even lying on top of the machine <laughs> you will see the maximum dose of 0 0.5 micro sieverts the uk population as a whole on average you receive 2700 per year in your own everyday life just going okay. about your normal business yeah um, just natural levels just, of radiation. Just natural yeah. levels, medical, dental, yep. um, taking flights. If you happen to live down in Cornwall, I don't know if we've got anybody from, from oh, yeah. Cornwall here, but actually with a granite substrate in Cornwall, um, there's quite a, a high concentration of radon gas. Yes, and of the, And the background in uh, certain parts of Cornwall can be up to 6,900 spike rate sieverts per year just from that alone on top of the 2,800 that you get anyway. So you are safe, what you're saying is, Glenn, that you are safer lying on top of one of your X-ray machines than you are walking a tour in Cornwall. As, but even that, 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 low, that, that's still very low lying level of radiation. In essence, yes. All right, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the reassurance. Um, final call for any questions from the audience. I know we've covered a lot of ground over the last 20, 25 or so minutes. No, in which case, I'll give the final word to you, Paul. In case anybody watching today in the auditorium, watching on the live stream or on demand later on, wants to find out more about Ishida, find out more about the IXPD system, how can they do that? Okay, so we're obviously on stand B50. Yes. So if in the next few days, if you want to come down and see us on stand, we'd love to uh, uh, come speak to you. Not Even if it's not about X-ray, we'll speak to you about any of our automation products. 
Um, obviously, you can go on the internet, so um, that is a, a, an option. Um, and also, um, use the telephone. Use a, a traditional method, oh, yeah. which maybe uh, people don't do. Um, you can also, on our stand, there's a QR code that you can scan to get more information. Uh, and we also do, there's a, there's a, um, a 50 pound voucher that uh, you can uh, win on our stand if you take part in our survey. So come down onto the stand and, and take one of these and scan it and potentially win 50 pounds. And that is stand B50, everybody, to go and have a chat with the team from Ashida. I've really enjoyed having our chat over the last 25 minutes. Thank you so much for hot footing it from your stand to be here on stage. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for Paul and Glenn from Ishida.